Today we have Madrona. This comes to us from my good friend Rick Chapman. Rick brought this down, oh gosh, a few years ago, three, four years ago. And it was one piece. I just came from the bandsaw where I cut it in half. I want to try and get two pieces out of it. Which one we're going to turn today? Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, as we like to say here at Shady Acres Woodshop. Howdy, let's take a closer look at them. They're both about six by seven by about three inches on one end and two and a half on the other end. That's what the wood looks like. I have Madrona growing on this property, a lot of them, but they're all small. None, none of them are this big. Maybe the biggest is, well, maybe close to the six inches, something like that. They grow much, much larger if they get some sunshine. They don't get much sunshine here at Shady Acres. So this one, you can see the bark is probably not going to stay with us. So I think I'm going to turn that one, this, this side up, and we'll just turn that bark away. The other one... The bark is much tighter, not not super tight, but much tighter, and I think it will stick with us. So since last week I did one with no bark, round bowl, for heaven's sakes, uh, I'm going to turn this one today and try and keep the bark on there. I see a little bit of spalting in there, so we'll see what happens with that. There's not much on this end. Actually, there's none on the other piece either. It's just right here on this one particular piece. So I don't know, we'll, we'll, we'll see what happens with it. I just don't know, I don't know if it's gonna be round or if the ends are gonna be square or semi-square, partially there, partially gone, I don't know. We'll just have to wait and see. All I know is that I'm gonna find the middle. I'm gonna drill a hole for a woodworm screw, get this mounted up on the lathe, and we'll get to turning this Madrona from Rick Chapman. We're gonna be turning at 580 RPM, 5 8 inch bowl gouge, mask and face shield on. See, sometimes I think, I know to you, from your angle, this looks just flat. And it is just flat. But it's also diamond shaped on both ends. And I don't think that's awful. From the end, it's not square anymore. It's square this way, it's flat. But it's, it's kind of diamond shaped. And sometimes that looks okay. And you don't have to take away as much of the wood. Here I have cut away some wood up to the bark. And here I have it. So I'm going to keep going a little further, but I might leave those diamond shapes on the end. It can add a little extra dimension to the piece. If I've come up on that side any a little bit here a lot more over here I just don't like playing around bowls that's all I, I like a little something different so I think we're pretty good with that now I'm gonna start coming the other direction so that I can get a smoother cut there's some of that spalting I was talking about I've been coming the other way to keep the bark on because I, I don't want to pick it up off of there. I think it's okay. And that's probably about it. I'll, I'll, I might change it after we lay out for a tenon. So let's do that. Work on the bottom. Lay out for a tenon or maybe a recess. Probably a recess on this one. I'm just going to lay my pencil across my live center. And that'll give me a, a good idea of the size hole that I want to make for my recess. And then I'll get rid of the tailstock and we'll make the recess. Now I'm going to raise my tool rest a little bit because I'm going to use a thinner tool, my recess tool, to put a dovetail on the side here.
That's good. Now we can take more away from this corner. We don't need a base anywhere near that big. We don't need the recess quite as deep as it is. So we'll add a little dimension to the piece and create a base for it to set on here. That probably looks better. Okay, and now I can come back over here to the side and finalize the shape. We're, we're just about there, really. Actually, I, I'm going to go sharpen up. This wood is pretty dang hard. I think uh, I think that's good. Time for sanding. I'm going to be starting the sanding at 120 grit. I'm going to work up through 400. I have the lathe spinning in reverse at 400 RPM. And I'll show you what that looks like as soon as I get my mask on. Then I'll stop the piece and sand these in. Like that. And I'll bring it back here in a little bit and we'll put some kind of finish on there. I'm not sure exactly what. See you in a bit. Well, I almost forgot I need to sand this bark. I should have done that before I started, but I'll do it now. So I'm using my Sandoflex. And that'll just clean it up and smooth it out and make it good. And oh yeah, supergrit.com has the Shady Acres special back in stock. They were out of stock. You guys ran them out of stock in a hurry. Anyway, they're back in stock and available on supergrit.com. So you can get this, a couple of extra refills in the grits that I use, and uh, $10 worth of other free sanding supplies. If you're interested in a, in a Sandoflex, that's the place to go, supergrit.com. Not an advertisement. I don't get anything for telling you that. I don't get anything for the Shady Acres special. It's just something they're doing for my viewers, so... I'm just telling you about it, that's all. I'll be back in a bit and we'll put some finish on here. Well, I decided on feed and wax for this piece because it's so smooth and this just gives it a nice smooth feel preserves that smoothness and I think it'll bring out a little more of the I can't say color because there's not much color in here but the differences in the grain there's that spalting and this nice little bark inclusion I think that was the start of a branch this stuff just makes the piece feel so good I can't put it in the middle yet if I want to sign it in here I, I can't sign over this so that'll come later when it's all done however I can put this over the signature I just can't put this on first So there you go. That's kind of what it's going to look like. I'm going to let that set up for 20 minutes, buff it up real good, turn it around, and we'll start working on the inside, and that's when I'll bring you back. 
See you in a bit. I turned the piece around and have the check jaws expanded into the recess. I'm pleased that the finish brought out the color of the bark to where it's kind of an orange, which is what I'm used to seeing on the Madronas around here. We're going to be turning at 630 RPM, 5 8 inch bowl gouge, mask and face shield on. Well, that's a son of a gun, isn't it? No damage done. I didn't make the uh, recess very deep, barely an eighth of an inch. So I'll just remount it. Try that again. Well, upon further investigation, <laughs> I did notice that I, I, a piece of this kind of lifted up. So I was going to glue it down, but I'm just going to go ahead and make it a little bit deeper than it was, which I've already done here. But then I'm going to have to sand it again before we can get started. I think I've gone past the part that lifted up. I don't see it anymore. I think it'll be okay now. So I'll get this sanded up, turn it around, and we'll get started again. Okay, got the recess fixed. I'm going to switch to a half inch bowl gouge. This wood is really hard. It'll take smaller bites and maybe be a little bit easier. Still at, what, six, 650 RPM, I think, now. Let me get my mask and face shield on. We'll get at it. See what that looks like on the edge here. Probably a little, little thick. Come out here a little further. I don't think we're anywhere close, but let's check. No, we're not. <laughs> About an inch and a half. <laughs> Just about three quarters of an inch. That is probably good. Yeah, a little bit more. That's about three eighths right now. We're going to go with that. I'm going to put a fresh edge on my scraper and we'll scrape.
Okay, time for sanding. I'm starting with 80 grit, working up through 400. I have the piece spinning forward and reverse at about 380 RPM. I'm starting at 80 because I noticed some punkiness where the uh, spalting is. That's, that's not unusual. So I'm trying to get that out of there. I don't know if I'll get it all or not. I'm going to go ahead and put the finish on. I'll bring you back here in a little bit and we'll take a good look at this thing. See you in a bit. Be sure you stick around at the end of the video so you can see the before and after shots of this piece. If you'd share the video, I'd really appreciate that. Thank you so much. Well, here it is. One Madrona Live Edge Bowl in the books. And it's a beauty. And I did get all the uh, punkiness out of there. Real pleased about that. Do you see anything in there? Does that look like anything down there in that lower corner? Right over here? Looks like a ghost to me kind of see his outline and then his eyes there. Does it look like anything any other way? I don't I don't really see anything else. But you might, let me know. I'm really pleased with the finish on here. It's just smooth as silk inside and out top and bottom what about those square ends those driving you nuts nah nah it looks fine doesn't it looks just fine so much more interesting than a round bowl i think well there you go hope you like it be sure you let me know thank you rick chapman for sending this along for all to enjoy if you like this video, thumbs up, please. I'd sure appreciate it. If you're a subscriber, thank you very kindly. I truly appreciate that. What I appreciate even more is that you chose to spend some time with me today. I'm looking forward to reading your comments. So for now, this is Phil, Shady Acres Woodshop, signing off.